The old king is dead, so what can we use to replace Flame of the Red Mains now that the poise damage of this weapon art is greatly nerfed? Just what exactly do we run for a new crit build? Let us explore today. There are a few big factors to consider for the weapon art. First and foremost, the most obvious one is poise damage per second of the weapon art. Since we're aiming for critical hits, knocking down the boss is the biggest criteria without a doubt. The next criteria might come as a surprise, but ease of landing the weapon art is very important in my opinion. While this can easily be overlooked, one of Flame of the Red Mains' strongest ability is how wide and long it is. It is very easy to land, making it a consistent tool across fights. This is a huge factor, as the weapon art is going to be what we mostly spam in order to stand sprint our enemies. It would be a big flaw of the build if your primary spammable fails to land half the time. The two other factors that we are going to keep slightly in mind is the DPS of the weapon art. Even with Flame of the Red Mains, a large part of the damage comes from the spamming of the weapon art. Therefore, the damage of the weapon art itself should be considered. Granted, I won't give granular details on the DPS difference. I'll only point something out when they're really sorely lacking in damage as the point of the video is poise damage for a crit build. I'll also take the stat investments needed to carry the weapon and the cost of the weapon art into account, since a weapon with less stat requirement means we don't have to waste stat points, and a cheaper weapon art means it is much more easily spammable at earlier parts of the game. However, weapon arts in general are pretty cost effective, so this really isn't a big deal. I'm not going to stress on it. I'm going to base the poise DPS off of 3 weapon art spams into a dodge to do a crit strike or to avoid the boss's attack, whatever you want it to be. This allows us to take into account the different recoveries of the weapon art. Let's use the old flame of the red mains first as an example. We start with our first cast of the red mains and then use the recovery animation for the next weapon art spam, which is 51 frames. Then we do the second cast and then the third cast. For the third cast, we are going to use the dodge animation recovery frame to take into account both spamming weapon art and dodging. This means that the recovery frame is 49 instead of 51. This gives us a total of 151 frames for our rotation of 3 red mains. Each red main deals 40 poise damage. Since we're casting it thrice, we get a total of 120 poise damage. 120 divided by 151 equals 0.795 poise damage per frame in 30 FPS. So, if we multiply the result by 30, we get 23.84 poise damage per second. This is what I'm going to do for each weapon art. But, this is the old flame of the red mains. Replacing 40 poise damage with 10 poise damage, or you can just divide by 4, we're now only sitting at 5.96 poise damage per second. The new Flame of the Red Mains is completely pathetic when it comes to poise damage. Giving a guess from personal experience, you need at least double the poise damage per second of the new Flame of the Red Mains to even find it decent at staggering enemies. By the way, a quick note for the testing troll here. It has 65 poise, and the first hit you do on it has the 20% unaware damage bonus that also applies to poise damage. Therefore, a skill that usually staggers the troll in 3 hits can stagger it in 2 hits with a bonus. Okay, now let's take a look at Moonveil. Why Moonveil? Well this weapon art does have quite the damage, and even poise damage if you manage to connect the blade. It is also really flexible. I figured this would be a good baseline to see if the new generation of weapon art for crit spam is worth it. The base poise damage of the katana is 5. so. Assuming we land the blade portion as well, we get a total of 27.5 poise damage for the R1, and 30 for the R2. Here is the FP cost just for reference. The sheathing animation is 35 frames, and the weapon art's recovery for R1 and R2 are 50 and 57 frames respectively, and the dodge recovery frames for R1 and R2 are 31 and 37 frames respectively. The recovery to dodge is actually so much shorter that you can just do a dodge in between because of the 19 or 20 frame difference. Dodging doesn't make you spam faster, 
but at least you can reposition after every transient moonlight. However, it does mean that for any other weapon art that has the dodge recovery at least 20 frames shorter than the weapon art's recovery, we will just reduce it to 20. Using Marika's hammer as an example, because the recovery to weapon art is 24 frames longer than its dodge recovery, I will shorten it to 49 frames. And in case you're curious, Marika's hammer isn't going to be the secret poise breaking machine. Following what we did for red mains, here is the total amount of frames needed for R1 and R2 transient, using the dodge recovery for the last one. Divide the poise by the number of frames, and we get poise damage per frame. Multiply that by 30, and here we are. The heavy attack version has a tad bit more poise damage per second, but they're roughly the same. By the way, Unsheath's R2 has the same poise damage as Transient if you land the blade, but Unsheath's R1 has less poise damage. Compared to the two versions of Red Mains, Transient is definitely better than the new flame, but you can see it sorely lacking versus the old one, not even reaching half the poise damage per second. This is because Transient Moonlight's recovery animation is fairly long. Next, let's explore a few more weapon arts. The Ground Slam or Golden Slam and the Earth Tree Slam are getting a mention because someone pointed out that hitting with the butt deals quite a bit of poise damage. 36 in PvE to be exact. While this is true, I can already tell you that the animation time for the slams is far too long to be good. If we quickly do the math for the chain, we're getting 370 frames total. We're doing 144 poise damage with the slams and 162 for the Earth Tree version because it has higher poise damage on the AoE. Multiplying the poise damage per frame by 30, we arrive at 11.68 and 13.13 poise damage per second. A bit better than Moon Veil, but consistently landing with your bottom is harder than hitting with the blade. So obviously this weapon art doesn't have high poise damage per second, even though you can potentially land 54 poise damage on a single earth tree slam. And I wanted to introduce it to talk about Glimblade Phalanx, a weapon art that people think is great at staggering enemies, because each of the little blades do 10 poise damage in PvE. While the weapon art does indeed do good poise damage, we have to calculate the frame data for Glimblade a bit differently because it takes 2 seconds before the Glimblade flies off after it appears, which is basically 60 frames using 30 FPS. This is a big issue because it means that unlike the other weapon arts, it isn't nearly as spammable since if you cast Glimblade again before it flies off, you will only replace your previous Glimblade. Yes, you can manually run into enemies but you have to do so for all 4 of your gun blades, which is difficult to pull off consistently. Therefore, I suggest this weapon art as a support for poise breaking, but not a singular spammable. As you can see on screen, as a spammable, it still poise breaks faster than our baseline moon veil, so not too bad. But in terms of regular DPS, it definitely is sorely lacking comparatively. However, during the time you wait for the blades to fly off, you can do something else like the Phalanx's follow-up, or something that deals even more poise damage. There just isn't anything else quite like this weapon art. Next is something I'm going to cover quickly, because it is eliminated by ease of landing. Carrion Grandeur is one of the more expensive weapon arts that deals a lot of damage at max charge. It also deals a ton of poise damage. But, of course, the biggest downside is its all or nothing long cast time. Furthermore, even if you do stagger the enemy, you won't actually want to do a critical strike. If you're interested in the full build, check out my swordless swordsman that makes use of this weapon art. Alright, let's start with a bunch of more melee based weapon arts that do 600% of the base weapon poise damage. Running the giant's hunt with colossal swords will give us maximum poise damage, which is 36. The colossal sword with the lowest weight and requirements is the Zweihander, which does still require some investment. It definitely is not as convenient as carrying Flame of the Red Mains on a dagger. And after running through our procedure, we get 17.05 poise damage per second. Before we jump into any premature conclusions, let's just look at more weapon arts. The next three, Lion's Claw, Stamp Upward Cut, and Prayerful Strike 
also do 600% of your weapon's base poise damage as well. We can run all three of these with the highest base poise damage weapon in game, which is either of the two hammer based colossal weapons. One thing to keep in mind though, is the much much higher weight and base requirements. Even if they manage to score decently high, I would still eliminate these because of the weapon you need to use to achieve 45 poise damage per hit. It'll be more like a colossal weapon build with a dagger tagged onto it to help do the critical hits. And after doing the math, Lion's Claw actually scores fairly high, nearing 20 poise damage per second. It does use 20 FP per cast, which is fairly high for a weapon arts though. I have an entire video on a prayerful strike build. It's normal that it deals lower poise damage per second, because it heals you for 30% of your max HP on hit, so it has additional utility. Next up is Square Off on Straight Swords. Unlike the previous weapon arts, Straight Sword is a much lighter weapon class, and requires far less investment, which streamlines your stat investment, and also just looks more like an assassin build. But definitely don't look down on its poise damage, as after taking a Straight Sword's 5 base poise damage into account, it still deals 30 poise damage on the R1 follow-up, and 40 poise damage on the R2 follow-up. And since the stance animation is super quick, the overall animation frames isn't that long. This leads to nearly 20 poise damage per second on the R2 follow-up. This is definitely the best melee option we have so far, especially if we take into account the ridiculously cheap FP cost. But obviously, the range of straight swords is fairly short, so let us begin transitioning into some more mid-ranged options. Unblockable Blade actually deals a fair bit of poise damage, and I'm talking about both the Coded Swords version and the Cypher Pata version. Since the base poise damage of Straight Swords and Fists are both 5, they both deal 30 poise damage. Both of them are buffed in previous patches to be faster, but the Fist one is still faster than the Sword. The benefits of the Sword is its fairly long range and even larger radius. Probably the skill with the largest radius in this video, which means that it has the utility of clearing group mobs like Flame of the Red Mains to cover an aspect that other weapon arts don't have in a more single target centric build. Impaling Thrust and Piercing Fang are skills that look quite alike and also do 600% poise damage. Running them with Great Swords or the Lance Great Spear with 5.5 base poise damage makes these weapon arts do 33 poise damage. They're definitely a lot faster than the slower melee skills and because of the step in, you can start the first attack at a further range. Granted, if you're spamming close to the enemy after that, I guess you're still very close ranged. One interesting thing to note is that Impaling Thrust with Great Spear and Great Sword is actually one frame faster on the recovery versus some of the lighter weapon classes. Pretty funny. And here we are, skills that counter shielded enemies that still do good poise damage per second. In fact, we have Impaling Thrust with over 20 poise damage per second, with only 9 FP as the cost. Its damage percent is only slightly lower than the Piercing Fangs, so for a crit build, I definitely prefer the Impaling Thrust. Another weapon art that looks sort of like these two is the Glintstone Chris's Glintstone Dart. Now, some of you are going to jump at that base 1000 poise damage, but it really isn't that impressive, because a dagger's base poise damage is only 3. This means that the follow-up attack of Glintstone Dart deals 30 poise damage. In order to use the follow-up, we must cast the projectile first. While the charge version does do more bullet arts damage, it takes far too long and our focus here is a stagger. The additional 2.5 poise damage for charging up the bullet really isn't worth the time. And since the focus is not building for projectile damage, you can just do better by staggering faster with the uncharged version. With everything considered, Glintstone Chris comes out at a mediocre 15.63 poise damage per second. With that done, this is what the melee lineup looks like so far. This list really shows you just how overpowered the old Flame of the Red Mains was. It literally is one of the few ashes with a large AoE like Unblockable Blade, yet deals nearly twice the poise damage per second. I've already said Prayerful's benefit is its healing power which is used in another build I've introduced. The two outstanding picks are Impaling Thrust and Square Off with R2, 
their poise damage per second is roughly the same. Impaling Thrust's weapon choice requires a bit more investment, but I do prefer the longer range and shield pen it provides. You can still pick Square off if you prefer straight swords though. They pretty much eliminate everything else. One thing I do want to point out here as a bonus is charged heavy attacks actually do a lot more poise damage than just heavy attacks. And unlike the weapon arts, they do get a 30% poise damage multiplier when two-handed. This means that I think many of these weaker poise damage per second melee weapon arts are actually not impressive at all because I can just find a relatively fast charged heavy attack with something like the Endure Weapon Art, and because of that, I favor the Impaling Thrust since Square Off is pretty short ranged. Okay, with the melee stuff out of the way, time to look at the ranged options. There's not a lot, which is probably why Spectral Lance even got videos with 300k views despite being quite weak comparatively, as I'm about to show you. The only saving grace is its low FP cost. But you don't need to be this low if you just poise break faster. Spectral Lance actually takes quite a bit of time for the recovery. For its poise damage, even though it's a bullet art, it deals poise damage based on the weapon. Our best choice is the Lance, which has 5.5 base poise damage instead of 5 compared to our other options. However, Lance isn't great on the Colt's Infusion because it doesn't have base bleed or poison and Spectral Lance scales to Arcane for its bullet art damage. It really is awkward, and even with the Lance, we're only looking at 11.96 poise damage per second. Honestly, not too impressive, considering you need the Arrow's Reach Talisman just to prevent damage drop off at longer ranges, so it's an extra waste of a Talisman slot. Instead of running Spectral Lance, you can just run the Ice Spear for poise break. Spectral Lance does have a farther range and lower FP cost, but if you want to hit something that far away, there are better damaging options, since you're not going to crit them anyway. And the little FP cost was never our issue. The projectile of the Ice Spear deals a flat 160 frostbite buildup, even if your weapon is not on the cold infusion. However, the melee spinning startup is a weapon hit, so it is based on your weapon's infusion. You also deal slightly more poise damage with the Lance. Here we are with the total poise damage 3 hits of Ice Spear deals. With a much faster animation than Spectral Lance, here is our final damage if we hit the enemies at melee range. But the number we care more about is definitely the pure ranged poise damage, 13.08 which is higher than the Spectral Lance. Here is the full comparison. And with the Frostbite buildup, that just about seals the deal because frostbiting an enemy allows you to do 20% more damage to them, which includes the critical hit. Finally, we have one last bonus weapon to cover. I bet you didn't expect Wing of Asto to appear here. Nebula is a delayed AoE that deals 13 poise damage per explosion. This means that depending on the number of explosions hit, you can deal different levels of poise damage. It's not difficult to hit 3 or even 4 of the explosions on larger enemies. But on smaller enemies, you're most likely looking at 2. If we're looking at 3 explosions, you deal 117 poise damage in 3 hits, since we're dealing 1 less poise damage per cast than Flame of the Red Mains. Why am I mentioning Red Mains? That's because Wing of Asto actually has the same weapon art animation as Flame of the Red Mains. This weapon art is actually great at staggering, with only a bit less poise damage than the old Flame if 3 explosions hit. There is the delayed aspect though, and hitting 2 explosions only is not exactly great. Which is why Bastard's Stars isn't nearly as good. The weapon hit of Bastard's Nebula itself deals 8.25 poise damage, but it takes far longer to cast. Furthermore, it is also harder to hit multiple explosions. Even on this troll, you very often only land 2. When put side by side with the wing of Astos explosions, you can clearly see the winner. Alright, here is the full list of the weapon arts variations I covered in this video for a final conclusion. How the mighty has fallen. RIP Flame of the Red Mains. As for these ones, I've covered in part 1 of the conclusion. It's timestamped after the melee weapon arts, so you can go back and look at why they're eliminated. A quick summary is that melee weapon arts are generally short in range while requiring weapons with higher stat investment. The only ones I'd really recommend 
is the impaling thrust with the lance or great swords, or square off with the straight sword. Unblockable blade on the coded gets a mention only because of its wide radius, which helps a crit build deal with AoE while being very lightweight. But it is pure holy damage in PvE, which is iffy versus endgame bosses. The best ranged poise breaker though is Ice Spear. This is an excellent ranged weapon art that applies 160 frostbite buildup on its projectile, regardless of your infusion. And frostbite does indeed buff our critical damage by 20% as well. And if you land at closer ranges with the melee portion, it deals even more poise damage. While Spectral Lance can indeed be thrown further than Ice Spear, the enemy would usually be too far away for us to do a critical hit. If the boss doesn't dodge a whole lot, the Wing of Astos Delayed Explosion actually has great poise break potential against larger targets. And finally, the Glenblade Phalanx, while not readily spammable because you must wait for the blades to fire off, is a great supplement to poise break builds since you can prepare the blades ahead of time. Like and subscribe so you don't miss my new crit build, nicknamed the White Shadow. I'll link it to the end of this build after it's done too. If you want to support my work, please consider buying my fantasy novel or donating to my Patreon down below. With a book purchase, you can also request a topic from me, Krite, signing out.